Thank you for still being with us here on Plus TV Africa. And now it's Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. Uh, we will be having our analyst to dissect it for us, and he is Inya Etok. Good to have you, Mr. Etok. Ezekiel Inya Etok, rather. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for joining us. All right, so uh, we're kicking off uh, this morning with. Uh stories from the Nigerian Tribune, um, one of the lead ones, uh, lead stories there, of course, is talking from Amnesty International. Mm -hmm. It says, lecky shootings, Amnesty International warns against cover-up. Um, there's also um, one uh, the, of the stories we can find here, despite U.S. opposition, Okonje Wella likely to emerge WTO DG. COVID-19, Germany and France go into lockdown as second wave strikes. Um, we'll also hear um, on the Tribune, after protest, after workers' protest, UI Council suspends appointment of new VC. Court rejects EFCC's plea to issue arrest warrant against the Ziani. Also, insecurity undermining Nigeria's economy. And uh, why Nigerian varsities can't run 100% e-learning, and that is from the NUC. The police get multiple benefits in Lagos. And uh, lastly, on the Tribune this morning, Wiki offers 20 million naira each to families of soldiers and policemen killed during IPOB clash. Those are the major stories. Uh, Mr. Yeah, talk. Um, I think we can start from the uh, story with uh, Okonje Wella and the delay in her confirmation as a WTO DG. Let's, let's kick off with that first. Yeah, definitely it's a very good place to start for me for more reasons than one. Um, personal and general, uh, that's what I put in my group um, chat not long ago. Um, on a general note, it is good to know that Africa can parade what can match anyone anywhere in the world. And we have a lady in whom we must, as Africans, not just as Nigerians, be extremely proud of her. When her regime came up, even all her contemporaries, her co-contestants, had to know that there was a fight, a tough fight that they had to um, deal with. And um, she's really, really made us proud. There are so many, it seems my internet is unstable, sir. There are so many um, things that have come up on account of her candidature. And um, at the end of the day, out of about 164 countries, and she pulled over 100. So it's like pulling over 100 and leaving about six to, to the second candidate. When you flog somebody that much, America has to come up with more than just rhetorics to be able to give convincing reasons why they will not um, endorse her. But I like it the way that the paper uh, has put it. And that is that um, it's just a delay. As far as I'm concerned, um, the, the, the gap is so much that um, it will be difficult. It become a very brazen attack against Africa by America. And I don't know why President Trump would rather do that at this time, but there's a lot of politics to it. I think uh, we'll probably talk more on it, but as far as I'm concerned, this lady has done, apart from being, uh, you know, in the World Bank, the MDI, okay. the highest place. When she was Minister of, um, of, uh, of, of, of Finance in Nigeria, and eventually became what they call for the first time the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, she did some things that actually did shake um, the, 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 the world. You know, some of those things included the, how we exited the Paris Club. Those things hit them real hard. And apart from exiting the Paris Club, she brought up the policies that made it such that, you know, some of the goods that were coming in being dumped on us, Nigeria was able to take a decisive and definitive policy on our, on our, on our economy. And that brought us to when the economy was reversed to becoming the strongest or biggest economy in Africa. These are things that were done by strategists. I know these foreign countries. I'm, 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 I was pleasantly surprised that China, um, um, EU, 
and I, I, Japan were able to say, look, we want this person. But I can understand why America would be concerned because there seemed to be a certain level of romance between Nigeria, the giant of Africa, and China, you know? And um, that should not be unexpected because the world is changing fast and right. boys are fast becoming men. Okay. And the world is becoming more competitive. And Africa is like the resource base of the whole world. So you've got to play hard. You, these are not the times that you take Africa, Africa for granted. They've okay, got let, to let's, play let, let's, uh, let's quickly move on. Mm -hmm. uh, talk also on uh, Amnesty International and their uh, views with regards to the Lekki shooting. Uh, they've, also, they've stated that um, they're warning against the cover-up from, from the government. How powerful are those statements uh, at a time like this? I didn't get that. Uh, I'm, I'm asking you that you also uh, quickly speak on Amnesty International warning uh, the government against the cover-up with regards to the Lekki shooting. Uh, how important is their view at, the, at a time like this? You, you see, it, it bothers me, and I cannot say this enough, that people should wake up. Our governance system in Nigeria has to wake up. We've been so archaic, so anachronistic for too long. The world has moved on. There's something called technology. There's something called, that's the new, that's the new world order. And we still live in this denial, believing that we can run government, run systems based on those, those archaic, those, those old-fashioned mindsets of, 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 of lying to the people, of, of, of you know, just, just not coming to terms with reality. This is the age of technology, my friends. You guys got to wake up. This is the, the age where, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't hide again. Governance, all those secrecy policy has, we've got to come to terms with the fact that those things are gone. So I think that Amnesty International is helping Nigeria to the extent that we, we hope we do not embarrass ourselves at the larger stage. Because what happened at the toll gate? Somebody is running a live feed and you are calling that an unverified source. Gee, I, I don't even know how to express myself. A live feed. The whole world is seeing technology. This is not even a, a, a video that you can say whether it was, uh, you know, you have to date it to see whether it was doctored or to see whether there was. This is a live feed. Please go and Google, uh, or rather do internet search and find out what a live feed means. And then you are coming to tell me, Amnesty International, they are moving with the current realities with technology. And if the army is not very careful, they will embarrass themselves at, at a wrong time, number one. And number two, I, I heard the, the chief of army staff saying, look, I don't care about their yeah, visa, I can stay here, I love my country. It sounded patronizing, it sounded, it, it's simplistic. Sir, with all due respect, besides travel ban, there's something called ICC. That ICC is something that is not limited to your country. You don't need to be in America or in UK or in China or anywhere for you to be picked if there is a case of genocide established against you. Right. So I think that what you should be more concerned about is, number one, was there a case of civilians? You know, in, in, in the Geneva Convention, even okay. in times of war, if you are in the battlefield and soldiers, enemies, raise their hands and flag and white handkerchief, you are not supposed to shoot at them. You can't shoot at them. You can't by the Geneva Convention. Now juxtapose that with a citizen kneeling down, carrying the national flag and the national anthem, singing, and you open bullet on such people? All right. I think Stay that talk. the uh, army should first go back home and ask for the evidence.
All right, let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pause it there so, you, so we can also get to uh, <laughs> the open up other uh, uh, newspapers this morning. Right. In, the, in the interest of time, I mean, we know how worrying the events uh, that happened uh, the previous weeks are, but um, we need to take a look at other newspapers as well. So we, we take a look at the Punch newspaper, which will be displayed uh, on the screen, but before we get to it, it says electricity customers lodged 204,506 complaints in three months. That story is on page 24. Again, we have Okonjo Iweala for favored for WTA job despite U.S. opposition. And it's good that that clarity is coming <laughs> with all that was awash on social media yesterday with the messages. Uh, Buhari, Lawan, and governors preach love and tolerance at Mulid on page 12. And 3.9 billion Naira residents permit a scam. Ministry officials, a firm land in EFCC. We also have there the lucky shootings. MBA insists on probe amnesty releases evidence linking uh, military invading soldiers uh, prevented um, ambulances from reaching injured protesters, according to AI, uh, Amnesty International. And stop denials, admits error, MBA tells the federal government, and we demand accountability. And that's by NSAS protesters. We also have other stories that US uh, suspends visas UI rather suspends VC appointment workers allege imposition. APC lashes PDP over 3 billion naira COVID 19 uh, fund whereabouts. And six policemen killed, five stations burnt, AK 47 stolen, all in Oyo State. The story is on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And prisons reject suspected looters, thugs arraigned by police. A tragedy averted as fire got petrol station in Lagos. Some bit of good news. And Ogun Hotels, worship centers in full reopening. Ikiti workers resume. These and more you'll find uh, inside the Punch newspaper. Now let's hand over to our analyst, Nya Etok. All right, thank you. Um, two things. Probably I should have actually started by giving my best wishes to our Muslim brethren on today, giving us that holiday and people like us can have a day to just stretch our feet one more time because after the COVID-19 stuff that held us down for so long, when we came out, we were like firing on all cylinders. So uh, a day off to at least cool our feet and do a lot of um, sober reflection. So best wishes to them uh, because of the little uh, the piece of news there. We have the uh, Buari as a president, a Senate president, governors uh, preaching love, tolerance. And I think it's a good time to preach love and tolerance and all that. But I would rather like to look at the last, um, the bottom left, um, the story on the bottom left, which talks about prisons rejecting suspected um, looters, thugs arraigned by police. And it just bothers me again. We really need to come down and redefine our criminal justice system and who a criminal is, what a crime is, the different types of crimes, the different punishments for crimes and things. We really need to have a new conversation, a new mindset on how to do things. Somebody loots a warehouse, I mean, that's bad. What sort of uh, punishment should go to such people? Can we have a situation where we redefine our punishment system and start to have, you know, where you are asked to do community service? There are lots of farms that we need to send people there to go and do farming. There are lots of streets, <clears throat> excuse me, that need to be cleared. There are lots of things that can be done. Community service should be brought in as a viable way of punishing people depending on the type of crime. It's not everything that just goes to the prison, everything that goes to what they call it uh, correctional facilities. Mm -hmm. We really need to come to look at that again. But at the root of all this is I look forward to that day, and I believe 2023 will be the beginning because we must make it that way. When we can have biometrics, where we can have data of citizens, where we can have the profile of people, now for as long as we are using numbers to share money, we will never, never have the correct population the correct identification, the correct national ID that we must have if we must make progress. Because if we had that, then 
anywhere you commit a little crime, in quotes, you know it's going to go on record. And when you are looking for a job, they are going to look at your criminal record or your conviction records, and people will realize that this you did on so-so date, that you, that you did in so-so year, that was one of the biggest deterrents to small crimes. Because people know that if you commit a crime in Sokoto, maybe you committed rape or you were a looter or you were convicted or you even broke speed limits that we really don't have or you didn't have licenses and things like that. Those things are going to be on record. And when you go for employment or any little thing, all they need to do is key in your national security um, number, your employer, and you will have a certain or they could have people you know, with whom you can do this cross-checking and they'll be able to give your criminal record. That will be a big deterrent to our young people. So can our governments just take the mindset of, oh, if they know the numbers, they will expose us. One day it's going to happen. Right. One day it's going to happen. Somebody is going to come and run the affairs of this country, run it properly, and let this country be the giant of not just Africa, but of the black world that it ought to be. That is where data, statistics, population, these are things that are not just for numbers to share money. They are things you use to plan. There's so much speculation. I've been in the housing subsector. For the past 10 years, our housing deficit has been 17 million. I mean, everybody knows that doesn't make sense. But that's what we're going with. Why? Because we don't have data and statistics that we use to profile things. And these mm. are the things you need to run an right, economy uh, that works. Mr. talk. I'm sure that these are... Uh, things that we would continue to work uh, towards, you know, if we plan to improve on, you know, our, our uh, country um, and um, move from the stage that we are currently. But that, let's also quickly share uh, stories from the Nation newspapers this morning and see what stories we haven't looked at yet. Uh, it says here, looters cart away nine trailer loads of items from firm. FEC OKs uh, 4.5 billion naira. Uh, for exam papers. I'm, I'm still not sure exactly if that is a real story or not. Um, but it says here that FEC okays 4.5 billion naira for exam papers. Lockdown in Germany and France. Also, lawmakers say sanction discos for defrauding Nigerians. Senators reject ministers' plan to put 20 power projects in home council. And also... Uh, Omar Gigi cautions Niger Delta agitators against attack on oil facilities. Um, NBC under fire, over fine on TV stations. And of course, um, Mahmoud Yakubu is in the news. The PDP and IPAC OK Yakubu's renomination as INEC chairman. And all, lastly, 10 inmates on the run rearrested for fresh crimes. Uh, I think we can just go uh, to some of the stories that we haven't uh, shared uh, views on and that uh, should be the um, renomination of Mahmoud Yakubu and the NBC and the fine on TV stations. Um, Mr. Ezekiel, you know, talk, let, let's quickly have you share quickly on those uh, two stories uh, okay, before quickly, we run. Um, I think today is about people that I'm passionate about. Madam Okonjo Iweala, a personal friend and um, somebody I respect so much. The second person is um, Professor Yaku. Uh, he's another person I, I have very deep um, respect for and a personal relationship, if I may say so. Now, let me say two things. Number one is that two things that this man has done that endeared me to him. Number one is that I was a chairman of a, a party, a national chairman of a party. And the first meeting we had um, was when he was appointed, the very first meeting. What he said in that meeting, that was my very first time of meeting him, he said that INEC is, is overburdened with some of the things that they do not have the capacity to do, that they should take those aspects away from him so he can face conducting elections, giving credible elections. That was the very first meeting he had with us. As at that time, we were 29 party. You know, I was one of the national chairmen, Young Democratic Party, where I was the pioneer national chairman. And it, it, it just captured me immediately that in a country where everybody's looking how to hold on to power, the president wants all the lists on the exclusive list 
doesn't want to send the concurrent, it just wants all power concentrated in the center. A man says, please take some powers away from me that I don't have capacity to execute so that I can face what matters. For me, that was, was he told me of somebody who is focused and is vision driven. I, I love that. Number two, of recent, we know the extent to which politicians really don't like this case of clean elections for reasons we all know. How will National Assembly members pass laws that will make for free, fair, credible elections when they know that it's called self-suicide? Are you telling me, put the elections on the ground and over 90% of the people there cannot, cannot win in their constituencies? So when this man, when he was up for re-election or reappointment, when he should have been silent on electronic voting, when he should have been pandering to the wishes, the whims and caprices of these you know, uh, assembly members, he stood up and insisted in a dope elections, you know, what, we, what you saw, we're going to have the reports transmitted from the local government, uh, from, the, from the polling units, from the PUs. He insisted on it, and he got it done. And he said, I'm going to go forward for full electronics voting. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy is going to. So I want to give Mr. President credit. And for me, it's a pointer to the fact that he might just do what I have always prayed he would do, and that is exit on free, fair, credible elections. For him to have heard what this man said and said, yes, I want him, I want him, is an indicator that Mr. President is thinking of 2023 as being free, fair, credible. And I give a lot of credit to that. Um, let me just take a second to say NBC. It's okay, important I say this. Very quickly. NBC, please live up to the times we live in. You cannot sanction stations and try to shut their mouth. I pray, don't let NBC become another hashtag. Be careful. Wake up. Smell the coffee. The youth want a new Nigeria that works for them. That's all I will say. All right. A very good way to end it. Thank you so very much, Ezekiel Nyaitok, for your contributions. Uh, as always, time is never enough on the newspaper review segment. Thank you, and stay safe out there. <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, yeah, time is in, indeed never enough. Every yeah. time we do of the press, so many issues. It's been a pretty interesting morning. And of course, uh, once again, happy Maloud Al-Nabi. Al-Nabi? Oh, yes. okay. Happy, Mal I wrote it down somewhere, <laughs> Malin, Malin Nabi for our Muslim brothers and sisters. There's a lot of people who um, are going to be at home today. It's a public holiday. Um, and so Lagos, uh, yeah, we have to work. Um, so so the, the whole city, of course, uh, would have less traffic. Go about your you know, lawful activities. Do what you need to do to ensure that you end the month of October with uh, some reason to smile. Um, we're going to be here for you, as always, uh, doing the things that we uh, do best. But that's uh, most of what we have for you this morning. Mm -hmm. And it is... Um that's a wrap on The Breakfast. As always, your comments and observations are welcome via all our communications channels showing on your screen. We'll be back with more same time tomorrow here on Plus TV Africa. And thank you for watching. Up next is news on the hour in our studio right after the break. <laughs>